Hey guys, it's Jeff, formerly of the Overwatch team. I know it's been some time, but I've been watching over the state of Overwatch from the sidelines, much like a superhero watching over his city, or maybe more accurately like a Hanzo watches the payload from just a meter outside of its pushing range. I consider all of you my children, and even if Papa Jeff's got to go out, I'm always still with you in here, in your heart, assuming you all still have hearts after those 20,000 or so matches against Widow Smurfs. Now, that being said, I'm incredibly disappointed with the direction the Overwatch team has taken in my absence, whether it be related to the game itself or uh, other. And it disgusted me so much that once Overwatch 2 finally reared its ugly head, I stopped paying attention to the Overwatch scene. I've been holed up in a bunker since then, doing nothing but playing Civ 5. At this point, I would say I've mastered the game and I've perfected a secret technique that normally lets me win the game by about turn seven. That's about the same time it takes the average damage player to report their support for having even a modicum of fun. While being this good at a game sounds fun on paper, it quickly became tedious and I emerged from my bunker to a new world. Somehow some of you poor saps are still playing this Overwatch 2, so I'm here to review the changes you guys have made since launch. Here's hoping you bastards haven't mucked things up more than you already did. So let's jump straight into things. Hmm, oh wow, looks like October is just a lot of bug fixes. And something about Bastion and Tor both being temporarily unavailable. Glad to see Overwatch 2 is keeping in line with our old Overwatch 1 philosophy. That being infrequent balance updates, frequent bugs. This provides for a lot of gameplay diversity while giving Blizzard employees time for other things. Yeah. Oh, actually it says Torb was only removed from ranked. Now, normally, I'd say that is just the same as being removed from the game, because who on earth plays QP? But now that they finally took my advice, and at least put no limits permanently in the arcade lineup, I'm not even sure why anyone would play anything else. Moving on. Starting off pretty weak with some diva nerfs. I'm not sure why there is so much hate for my favorite gaming waifu, but it's probably that whole Matrix no let me headshot thing, so that makes a lot of sense. Nerfing Zarya 2 at this point, honestly, they should just make all tanks 200 HP. What is even the point of the role? Everyone was really happy when we removed a tank. I'm wondering how much happier they'll be when we remove another. 4v4 is sounding pretty fun. Yep. Oh, wonderful. If things couldn't get any worse, you went and nerfed Genji. I can see why you might want to nerf him after playing a match against an Owl player, but what you fail to realize is that if you are losing to Genji, that means the Genji is just better than you. Tough luck. But clearly the balance team can't get out of plat, so here we are. Junkrat nerfs. Huh, odd. Finally something good. While we may never get to see the old Sombra healer of yore, she seemed pretty nuts at launch, so I'm glad at least one of these changes didn't absolutely suck. Oh, and a Kiriko nerf? To her invulnerability. Wait, that's not her nade? Oh, this is nerfing the invulnerability on her teleport? I didn't even know it did that. Is there anything this pay-to-win BS can't do? Yikes. Up until now, I've been skipping all of this boring stuff in the margins, but glossing over December, I'm actually seeing something I like a lot. Not sure whose brilliant idea it was to give damage players move speed in the first place, but I can almost guarantee you they weren't a support or tank main. While I love the concept of nerfing DPS players who don't play with their team and just sit on the sidelines getting zero value, this passive seemed way too overtuned for DPS who aren't Crow Magnon. Honestly, I think this new passive is a great change. And I see nothing wrong with giving DPS players big reload speed for getting Elims. Finally, a dub for the Overwatch dev team. Maybe this seems counterintuitive, but I'm going to skip over the Ramatra stuff. While it seems like everyone and their mom loves spewing their opinions about everything all of the time when it comes to Overwatch balance, myself included, I try to refrain from doing so when I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And given I haven't actually taken the time to play against Ramatra, I can't actually tell you how healthy he is for the game. Have fun raging about how overpowered or underpowered he is. I'm just going to assume you are wrong and hard stuck. Oh wow, I'm not reading all that. Listen, Doomfist has kind of a special place in my heart. I can never forget what we did back then. Doomfist's lore was getting the community really hyped up. Like, really excited. But Doom as a character was this guy Paul's idea. Paul was a kind of annoying person, but after all the Doom hype, Paul was getting worse and worse. 
So the design team decided we would make Doom's kit so undeniably unhealthy and soul-rending that the only people who would ever enjoy him being in their games would be sadists and masochists. And I think we did an absolutely great job. Two one-shots, four movement abilities, four CCs, and self-sustain. We really hit the mark for an absolutely unbalanceable character. I think Zenyatta mains still wake up in cold sweats to this day. My only regret is that even when we tried our damnedest to make his kit absolutely ridiculous to play with and against, he still only ended up as the second worst kit design in the game. You just can't beat Widow when it comes to questionable design choices. Someone finally had the common sense to end our little in-joke for Overwatch 2, and honestly, I feel like Frankenstein watching the death of his monster at this point. The world is a better place for it. Sorry for the rant, let's move on. I'm skipping Junk 2. Already called Junkrat Junk. Don't know what to call her. Queen? No thanks. Oh, Bastion buffs. Pog. Sojourn rebalance. Can't say I love the idea of a second Widow, but with more mobility and some CC but it sounds like they are trying to move her away from that sniper role, so thank God. Oh, Sim is still in the game? Honestly, given the changes she saw at the launch of Overwatch 2, I just figured they intended for her play rate to go from 0.01% to 0%. But I guess every game needs a joke character that you can beat someone on in order to make them feel bad. If any of you are losing to Overwatch 2 Sim, maybe you should find a new game. This ain't it, Chief. Tracer gets a buff. Pog. Anna buff. Pog. More Kiriko changes. I have to say, even just reading the alt nerfs, I am stone cold stunned that she was ever released in that state. Wow. Oh, and yet another joke buff for Mercy. I'm not sure who on the dev team was dumped by a Mercy main, but clearly they still can't get over her. Feels bad. More changes at the end of the year. Orisa changes. Ah. Robot cow is robot cow. Sojourn nerfs. Guess she was still too wild. Tracer's buff is getting reverted, but not completely. Darn. More Anna buffs. Weren't people complaining about Nade being busted for one tank? Wonder what happened there. And another invulnerability nerf. And it's to her Nade this time. Honestly, when I first heard about Kiriko's damage immunity, I thought, did they learn nothing from Baptiste? Lamp has to be one of the least fun game mechanics Overwatch has ever had the misfortune of featuring, so completely becoming immune sounds pretty ass. Honestly, though... With the nerf just being the duration, this will probably still be incredibly tilting at high ranks because good players will be great with it, and tilting at low ranks because your Kiriko will absolutely whiff this on cooldown. Oh gosh, there's still three more months to go? No, forget it. F am I allowed to swear on here? Fuck all of this. We're just gonna do a part two, I mean, if any of you care. Maybe the world has moved on from old Papa Jeff. I still love you. Please subscribe to Seta Marie or you'll miss my next update. And a big shout out to Eolicism, Surfer, Cami Lee, and JL. Thank you so much for your support on Patreon. It means a lot. See you all next time.